Well, hello there again, friends. Today is 4-16-2022, and today is Odin Project Vlog Day 93. <coughs> Pardon me. And um, <clears throat> today is a little bit uh, special in the aspect that I don't normally upload this early. Um, <clears throat> it is 9.17 a.m. on Saturday morning, my time, my local time. And um, the reason for that is I, I was uh, in a s very good flow state last night when I was working on this. <clears throat> and I was able to um, get through number two pretty easily, actually. Um, and it wouldn't have made for a very, <clears throat> it would have made for a great video, but not very long video. And so I, I wanted a little bit more substance. So I combined number two with number three. And number three was a beast, but uh, I was in flow state, and so I went ahead and knocked it out. Worked uh, a little bit later than I normally do on Friday night, and was able to uh, complete it. So today we're going to be going over step two and three. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a frog in my throat. <clears> throat> What's what <laughs> unusual, right? Yeah, it's, I always have a frog in my throat. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over this by... Uh, section first so we're gonna do number two and then we'll come back so we kind of talked about this in the last video it says all your book objects are going to be stored in a simple array so add a function to the script not the constructor that can take users input and store the new book objects into an array your code should look something like this and it shows an example um, and we kind of already started that in the last video we stopped at creating the function add book to library so let's start off there again I'm gonna show you my um, my term my VS code here and um, you're gonna see a lot of stuff so don't be worried we'll go through it all uh, methodically but it's gonna include everything from step three as well so just ignore that I'll, and I'll try to highlight with my uh, with my mouse so you can see where I'm currently talking about in case it's hard to see on the screen um, okay, so this CSS here, um, we have, uh, I commented again, my comments are very verbose right now, and ignore anything on here that's commented like this, um, like in line. That's just because I commented it out from the last uh, exercise, or last uh, 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 recording, because I may come back and use it later, I'm just not using it right now. So I didn't want to have it. I didn't want to delete it in case I needed it because I didn't want to recreate the wheels. So yes, it's a little messy, but ignore that. Um, so right here, function to add, for adding a new book to the array or library. So right here, <clears throat> highlight it for you so you can see it. Uh, we have a function created called add book to library, just as they said. And it takes in the arguments of title, author, page, and read. And then uh, we have a declared variable called book, and then it's it's calling a the uh, constructor, the object constructor up here, and is creating a new book with title, author, page, and read, uh, read. Um, and then uh, after it's done constructing that object here with uh, with the uh, current information, um, it then pushes. If you remember the push method that um, that pushes uh, the contents of book, which is the which is the you know object constructor basically. So the object constructor completes all this. The info comes back down. Um, we don't really need. I commented out the return statement because that's part of a function we don't need right now. And this I proved this works. Uh, so <clears throat> it takes the contents of this dot uh, title, author, pages, and read read and pushes it into my library which is currently an empty array up as, as seen up here as we declared it uh, earlier we declared that in the last video <clears throat> so that's what that does <clears throat> so you can see it's three lines it's pretty simple um, nothing we haven't seen before um, so that's that <clears throat> <clears throat> and then three is write a function that loops through the array and displays each book on the page. You can display them in some sort of table or each on their own card. It might be helpful for now to manually add a few books to your array so you can see the display. So this seems simple, but actually there's um, there's quite a bit going on underneath the hood. 
So there's HTML going on here, there's CSS, and there's JavaScript all involved in number three here. So I'm going to save the CSS till the end because I feel like the format we've been doing where I show it to you in the browser is it makes it easier for me to explain and you can see the inheritance and everything on, on, on the dev tools better than I can just showing you raw CSS in the file. So we're going to save the CSS to the end. I'm going to show you HTML that gets this job done and I'm going to show you the JavaScript after that that gets this done and then we'll do CSS uh, on the screen and you can see the you know the page. So that's how I'm going to tackle that. So if you go back over here, um, it's pretty simple. Uh, I'm actually using a lot of DOM manipulation here uh, in the JavaScript. So that's why I kept this kind of short, succinct, and simple. So in the body, we have uh, a class attribute of container. And then in this, and we have a child div that had, that's a class uh, form heading. And you'll see why I made this. Uh, this makes sense in a minute. I'll sh well, at the end... I'll sh we'll kind of review the HTML in the browser like we did before, and, I, and then it'll, it'll make even more sense. But <clears throat> I try to make my classes intuitive, so it's what it sounds like. And there's an H1 heading inside of it, uh, add new book to library. And then we have another div that's a child of container called uh, books heading. And it has an H1 inside of it that says current books to library. And then we have another uh, child div of container that's called form, <clears throat> and it has a paragraph. Um, of test uh, form info and some of this stuff's just um, like this especially you'll see this is just dummy text just to get it on the page so I can see what it looks like um, but these h1s are real and they're gonna stay at least for now and then I have a div called class uh, uh, books it has a class of books <clears throat> and it has nothing in it this particularly if right now where we're at um, on number three again we're not done with the project so you'll see in my JavaScript that and I'll explain things of why I'm doing certain things because we haven't wired up any future input so but books is the uh, is the class that's going to be manipulated on uh, we're gonna add uh, DOM manipulation so in your mind just remember class books because we're gonna build on that um, so with that said let's go to the JavaScript so we are going to go down here. I'm going to try to explain this the best I can. Again, ignore some of this stuff like that. Um, again, I council logged that out, or I um, commented that out, because that's what we had from the previous sec the previous step one. Um, or I mean, not even step one, sorry. That's from, I probably said that wrong earlier, that. And then this, if you remember, is from the exercise portion. So I didn't want to get rid of it in case we had to reuse it. I didn't want to re reinvent the wheel on that. So if you go down here, we have a function to uh, display the array on cards. So what this is going to do is this is going to create a function that <clears throat> basically does DOM manipulation. That's going to add child, and I'll show you this in the browser at the end. It'll make more sense. But it's going to add child divs to books, and then a child paragraph inside of the div. Um, object and it's going to add text to it and that's going to be the library uh, content so we're going to loop uh, starting off we're creating a function we're going to display books on page and it's cre we're going to create a constant variable called books that's going to take on document query selector books again I had to uh, I had to uh, knock off the cobwebs a little bit on the um, DOM manipulation so I had to do a little bit of googling to get to remember how to do this um, so this is going to select the query, uh, select uh, the dot the books class. So that's selecting the uh, books class here. So remember that. And then we're going to loop over the library array and display to the cards. Uh, so what that looks like is we have my library, which is the em current empty uh, array. And it says for each. Um, well, at this point in the code, actually, it's not empty. But uh, anyway, the array for each array item in the array we're going to create a, a another variable called card it's constant and it's going to create an element div just like I was mentioning so we're going to remember that we're going to have a, a div a child div of books called ca card and then cards going to receive class list of card so that we um, can use that later 
and call from it for our CSS. That's an important line. Don't forget that if you guys are following along and you're uh, looking at what I'm doing. I had to add that because uh, I have CSS, as you'll see, that calls the card um, selector. So we need to have it in there. Next one is books.appendchildcard. So what that does is that takes uh, the card that was just created here and, apply and appends it to books, which was declared up here. So it makes it a child of books. And then we have a for loop, <clears throat> a for loop inside of the for each. And the for loop is simply, this is where it gets a little tricky. So this is going to uh, loop over every key, every uh, key value pair in the library. And you'll see this uh, played out in the browser. So um, if you're a little confused, just keep following along and I'll, I'll show you in action here in a moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we have let key in library. So we're going to loop over every key in the library. So, uh, so example, uh, key would be uh, key would be this basically your title, your author, your page to read, and then the value will be <clears throat> whatever's inputted into that. So whatever the user inputs in for title, like um, you know the title of the book, that will be the value. So. Uh, when we loop in, we're in a console log. This is this is just for troubleshooting purposes. Uh, dollar sign key. So what this does is this uh, curly brace key um, keeps track of the current string of the key and prints it out to the log. And then my library key uh, key in brackets. Now it's a little deceiving to see the word key because you would think it's the it's the same thing, but it's not. The bracket versus the curly brace, the bracket will uh, display, I guess in this aspect, the key word here is kind of arbitrary, because it's not really the key, it's the value. So when you use the brackets, it's going to display the value of the key. So you'll see how that makes sense in the browser, but basically, so this is going to display the actual key with the curly braces, that's, that's what's going to initiate the key. So it's going to say title here, and then colon, and that's going to show the contents of my library key but in curly and uh, square brackets which is actually the va uh, the value of the key so for instance title colon and then uh, the hobbit is what it'll um, sorry I forgot to mute my phone again I keep doing that there we go <clears throat> um, so and then after that hopefully that made sense anyway I'll show you here in a minute in the browser and it'll make more sense um, so we have a constant created called paragraph or para um, I just being lazy and it that's a create element piece that's creating a P element uh, tag um, and we're calling it para in JavaScript and then para dot text content equals and that's the same thing as up here so what we're doing here is we're looping through each key we want it to text content is the uh, node property for para that will display the key and the library uh, uh, value uh, for that key um, that at, uh, array value um, on the onto the HTML onto the screen and that, and that line is important because that does that and then after that this line is just as important we're going to pin the child para to card so we create you know we created it up here and then paragraph will be a pl will be a, a child to card that was created up here and so we're going to have basically it, this whole block we're going to have a div inside a div inside a div, um, or a paragraph inside a div inside a div. Um, so that's how that works. Um, and then down here is simply calling stuff. So because we don't have a way for the user to input anything yet, we're just simply um, using some test dummy data. So I, I call add book to library to get things started. And so that calls the uh, this right here the function for adding the book to the library we already went over and so that will take the input of the hobbit comma jr tolkien 295 pages not read yet as we've already went over and then added another one um, out of my brain you know the seven habits of highly effective people stephen covey 200 pages read and i just copy and pasted that six times so we have something to work with and then, um, and then we have a council.log just for diagnostic purposes here at the end and i call the end of code array contents my library it was just a way for me to make sure that the uh, 
in in that instance at that moment that my library was incrementing correctly after receiving these that it was counting up the uh that it that the library was actually my library array was filling correctly with the add book function and that was counting and it was applying and counting inside of my library uh empty array just fine and then this here calls the display book on page and and so that starts the the whole function and the the loop we just described and again this isn't done yet and and so the end result ultimately is we're going to create a form so we'll get rid of this eventually we can't right now because we don't have the form built but we'll have a form where the user can input their book to add to the library and so this messy stuff will go bye bye but so with that said let's hit the browser um, I spent a lot of time on this so you can see here is here is the GUI here's what it looks like on the browser so as you uh, I want to show you something pretty cool so you know, minimize this a little bit here for a second so this actually is the format of this is what I took from Holy Grail mockup so this part here as far as that goes this is a grid inside of a grid and we'll go over this but it's responsive so um, it will resize and sh and shift as as the browser shifts. So it took me a while to figure out how to do this because the layout of this is different than Holy Grail. So it took me uh, I'm not shy. It took me quite a bit of time to figure this out. But see how it it works really good now. Um, it nothing is lost. Every, nothing's truncated. So we have six currently. One two three four. We have six as defined in the codes. So we have six one two three four five six cards, and you expand it. And it expands along with the page one two three four five six. So now, with that said, just to show you that, we're going to look at the uh, council. So as you can see, we have end of code array contents. This is at the bottom of the uh, of the code JavaScript script. Uh, so we see that it's uh, creating objects one two zero starts at zero one two three four five, which is a total of six, and it's correctly applying the object. Um, um, the object models uh, kind of JSON if you will uh, has a title colon so it's doing the object constructor inside of the array and we have title author and then this is uh, the this is the council.log activity from the key that we went over the key uh, key value pairs so then it's just going through each loop and it's printing that out just to make sure that's coming out nice and looks good and so now we go to the inspector and this is all DOM manipulation so as you remember from the code HTML code none of these cards were here these were all these are all DOM manipulatedly added so the cool part is is as I add a card as I add data um, through the input it creates its own card on the fly so the cool part about that so so you see you see six cards here so if I go back here and I add another one and through the DOM manipulation in the um, in the uh, function um, display book on page it actually creates another card and so we save that now you, we should see seven one two three four five six seven send that neat so and then here's that <clears throat> so going over the CSS now uh, we have a classic container that's a grid turn that on for you <clears throat> so this is the container of the whole grid it has border style groove, border style groove. Um, we went over this already in uh, uh, previous uh, um, exercise of uh, the last one so I'm not going to go over that again uh, please uh, rewatch that if you need to have further understanding there display grid grid template columns 1fr 2fr so we have 1fr here and double F, double the fr the size here for the row or the column and the row is 0.1fr just the same uh, process as last project so I'm hugging up the the titles of add new book to library and current books in library and text align center which centers everything inside of its cell and we have a min height the 100 VH and all that does is just ensures that the uh, the div uh, the 
the uh, all the divs inside the container go to the bottom of the page and not something funny where it gets stuck because I had that so I added that in there and then inside of that we have form heading which is this right here add new book to library and it has uh, that groove a border style again and text align centers inheritance and it simply has an h1 tag that doesn't really have anything in it except te text align center which is an h1 declared uh, declared in my CSS and then we have books heading which is uh, over here so what it sounds like so this is the heading for the books in the library and then it uh, also same thing it's uh, got a books heading a border style groove and inherited text align center from uh, the div h1 uh, current books and library uh, that's the text itself it's the same thing as the other text it it's just a line center h1 and that is filtered out because it's already centered here on h1 so there's that and go down here here's form these haven't been built out yet that's why they're blank they're, this hasn't so there's not much to go over here except this one's a groove and text line center so I will be adding this in the future videos as we go along in the requirements section we're just at number three and that's not required that will be where I'm going to put my that's why I put the test form info there just to see make sure it looks good but this will be where I'll put my next grid for the uh, form information for the user input um, so there's a text form info again just text align center nothing's fancy and we go down here to books so this is the where the magic's happening I'll turn uh, this grid on so this grid here you see in the purple this is class books and it has background color of this information I kind of basically copied over from well, some of it from the holy grail mock-up to save time border style groove um, added that in there and that's again the the cool little edge design uh, display grid grid templates this is repeat auto fit min max 251 FR and that does the uh, sizing I, I showed you earlier and we've already been over that in previous videos grid column span is two to three so here's your uh, uh, grid column line two goes to grid column line three uh, gap is 15 pixels so that creates 15 pixels of gap in between each card and background color uh, if I skip that that was that's just the uh, gray so that's the um, the background you see here behind the card and then we have uh, padding I did padding on here left top and right because gap doesn't um, gap only creates gaps between the cards and underneath the cards so basically outside of the cards it doesn't do anything so I created the padding left top and right so it creates even space so I added additional padding here here and over here so it looks succinct succinct and, and good pleasing to the eye so uh, let me turn the container grid off so I can turn the card grid on so then we come down here here is DOM manipulation so these don't exactly exist in HTML this is all coming from the JavaScript so that's cool uh, it took me a long time to figure this out, but uh, I spent most of my time on a lot of my time on this uh, between this and um, figuring out how to loop through the array uh, intelligently to display this because I was using I was getting for a while JSON uh, format on the cards and it was ugly. So I figured that out. Long story short, but uh, anyway, we have card here. It's a grid, so its background color is white, uh, color black. This is taken from the, uh, again, from the Holy Grail mockup, and I added display grid here so that we could get these to uh, format nicely because they're all jammed at the top without display grid. Height is 400 pixels, so that's the height of the card. Text align center centers everything onto the card, and that's about it. So then you have your P elements. These are DOM manipulated as well. Um, it takes on it, I do have a declared uh, card tag uh, target selector from books and then that takes on color black so and then text line center again just so it's aligned and colored correctly and that's it for that there, all the rest of the P tags are exactly the same uh, same targeting method and the grid of the card uh, yep I already went over that there's no special uh, I didn't apply any row templates or column templates. Didn't really need to. I actually had a column template, in, a row and template in there, but it wasn't doing what I wanted to, and I actually thought this looked pretty neat, pretty neat, so I just left it at that. 
and that's what it's doing here and overflow is just because it's going outside of the um, these are going outside of the defined values so that's why it says overflow but it doesn't matter because I've got as you remember I've got the grid growing uh, in a repeat function so it's adding in uh, explicitly uh, at the bottom here <coughs> excuse me and so that's basically it I don't think I forgot anything here so that's that's in a nutshell what we're what we're looking at so um, that satisfies number three so number four it will be going on to next which will be adding a new book button haven't really looked at it yet but that'll be uh, next time make sure uh, I, I'm trying to get into a better habit and I am doing it on this video um, or this series make sure that you're um, uploading to github so after each section I'm going to after each uh, video that is I'm going to do a uh, a git push that pushes up the updates that way I can kind of see and you guys too if you're following my github page you can see the progression of where things were changed and deleted and added so that um, you can follow along that way if you'd like to if, and if you don't that's fine that's fine as well so I uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, video and the ride today and this morning I know it went a little long but uh, probably one of my longest videos but um, this I knew this is going to take a lot of explaining. There's a lot going on in number three, and so basically we're about halfway done with the project. So um, this is a, a holiday weekend for us in the United States. So um, and we do celebrate Easter. So I don't know how, how much more I'll get to, or if I'll get to a video at all tomorrow. We'll just see. But uh, with all that said, uh, please like, share, and subscribe for more content. And, and uh, I see all. I thank you for all the new viewers and the uh, new subscribers. I see you, and I appreciate you. My um, my view count on my previous uh, part one video is is blown up. So that's that's uh, it's like double what it normally is, and I'm very grateful for you for that. So uh, with all that said, until next time, see ya.